So here's what we're going to say, just so you have some information here. I'm going to let f be one to one. Let it be a one to one function. Okay. Then the function g is the inverse of the function f if you've got the following. Because we're going to talk about how one function will change numbers, right? You know with a function, you plug in numbers, you get something else? I'm going to show you that if it's a one-to-one -one function, you can find a corresponding function that will basically undo everything that guy did. It's called the inverse function. And this is what you're going to see. You'll see that f composed with g of x gets you back to the original. And this is for all x for all x in the domain of g. But not only do you have that guy, but you also have this. That g composed with f of x gives you x for all x in the domain of f. So what this is saying is that if you're going to be inverse functions, if you stuff one inside of the other function, you'll always get x. If you stuff it the other way, you still always get x. Confused? Good. Always, right? If I give you, you in that situation where you're saying f is a one to one and g is yes. inverse of f. Yes. Yes. Okay. So what if I say this, um, f of x equals x to the third plus 2, and g of x equals the cube root of x minus 2. I'm, I'm going to give you these two functions, okay? And I'm going to ask you this question. Is g the inverse of f? Well, first you need to remember what x to the third plus 2 looks like. If I type in x to the third plus 2, is x to the third plus 2 1 to 1? Isn't it 1 to 1? Does it pass the horizontal line test? It sure does. Mm -hmm. So that makes it a one-to-one -one function, which means it has an inverse somewhere, right? Now I'm going to see if g is the inverse. And here's how you verify, without being able to look at a graph, that it is the inverse. So the first thing I want to do is the f composed with g of x. Let's see what that gives me. So if I compute f of g of x, Understand this means you take f, and what do you plug inside of f? You plug in g. Remember, this is the turducken? So I'm going to plug this guy into f, which bas basically means I'm going to take the cube root of x minus 2 and plug that into f. Let's see what happens. According to f, whatever you plug in, you're supposed to cube that and add 2. So if I plug in the cube root of x minus 2, order of operations, what would happen here? x minus 2 plus 2. The cube cancels with the cube root. Mm -hmm. x minus 2 plus 2 becomes what? And notice how I did this with an arbitrary x. No matter what value of x you plug in, when you do this composition, you, you get x. Because think about the composition stuff you had on your test. If I said, what is f of g of 10? f of g of 10. Okay. That means I'd have to plug 10 into g, right? What happens if I plug 10 into g? What do you get? 10 minus 2, the cube root of 8 is 2, right? And then you would take 2 and plug it in where? Here. If I plug in 2 into f, what do you get? 
he had 10. So you started with 10, you screwed around with it, and then you screwed around with it again and you get back to 10, right? So 10 goes into this club, right? Dude gets <laughs> wasted, Matt, right? Like wasted. But after he recuperates, he undoes all the stupid stuff that he did, and he gets back to being 10. Right? Inverse operations will undo your stupid stuff. Mm -hmm. So you're saying those two are not inverse? No. When I composed f with g, did I get back to my original x? Yes. Yeah. yes. So this is saying no matter what number I pick, if I do f of g, like I was saying before, f of g of 10, that means f of g of 10. We already said that g of 10 is equal to 2. <coughs> and then what is f of 2? 2 cubed plus 2, which equals 10. So notice what 10 did. 10 went into one function and became a 2. Then you plug that into the other function, and you get back to your original, which is 10. So what this is saying is that when you do this composition, what one function does, the other one undoes. And you see that if you did it the other way. But, but x doesn't equal x plus 2. x equals x minus 2, x plus 2. 2's cancel out. Right. So when you do the inverse of 3 square roots of x minus 2, you get x. But you're saying that... No. I'm plugging one <coughs> function into another. See, this guy would take a value of x and it does stuff to it. Say again? This function takes a value of x and it does stuff to it. I'm saying that whatever he does, if I plugged it back into this guy, he's going to undo it and get back to your original input value of x. If I compose it the other way, and I do g of f of x, which means g of x cubed plus 2. That <coughs> means I'm plugging in to my cube root. I'm plugging in x to the third plus 2. When I do this work, I get the cube root of what? Of x cubed, and what do I get out? I get x. So this is my original input value. Where does he go first? He goes to the f bar, right? He hangs out, drinks too much. And so he becomes this expression right here. He becomes wasted. He becomes wasted. Then Dude! He goes to Denny's. Then he, yeah, then he goes to Denny's or IHOP. And he gets, basically, that undoes what had been done with the other function, and he gets back to his original self. <laughs> Yeah, now he's sober. Now he remembers why he went to the bar in the first place. <laughs> to hang out with friends and play darts. I, what do you, why do you guys go to the bar? You guys are being weird today. Uh, let me graph this x, uh, cube root of x minus 2 for you. Here it comes. Ready? Do those guys look kind of interesting? Yeah. I'm going to zoom and I'm going to square this guy up for you just so you can see how it looks a little bit different. <coughs> what do you see about these? They're oblique mirror images of each other. They're kind of mirror images, but they're reflected across what line? An oblique line. Okay. What's the equation of that line? Check this out. See how that's cutting right in the middle of them? And how this x cubed, if you reflect it across that guy, you get that cube root guy. <coughs> you guys can't even believe it. I, I can just, there's every one of you have, oh, and goodness, tattooed across your forehead right now. That should be telling you so. That should be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs>